Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to a very special episode. Today's episode, well, it's a Monday motivation, but the special part is that I'm gonna be riding my bike, all right? So you're not gonna be seeing this uh, cute face, all right, this whole time. You're gonna be just listening to my voice as, uh, you know, I take you around uh, the streets of Merida. So without further ado, let's begin. So today we're gonna be talking about cleaning up your room. Again, we're doing a uh, Monday motivation. And as I already said in the intro, you know, we're riding the bike. So, yeah, well, you guys have a nicer view of things while you listen to me. But anyway, so today we're going to be piggybacking off of last Monday, in which we discussed, well, we discussed a bunch of things as we always do, but one of the things that we were talking about was uh, cleaning up your room, in which, uh, you know, it's very important to make sure that you take care of yourself first and foremost before you can take care of anyone else or do anything, period. You know, um, so we're going to be talking about that a little bit more because, you know, right now, you know, me coming out here and not just uh, doing a Monday motivation, but coming out here and riding my bike on a nice Saturday afternoon. In order to make this video, um, I'm not just taking care of you guys, I'm taking care of me. And, uh, well, because again, I'm going out for a nice little bike ride, get that exercise that I very, very heavily need, that we, we all need. You know, get that vitamin D that I've been lacking because it's been raining, it's been really, really bad weather. Um, for about the past week or so if you guys don't watch my other channel you guys are fully aware that we went through like a hurricane a thunderstorm you know many things here and today is the first day i'm back and uh in fact today the first day um with sun you know and uh again in over a week and right before it started storming really bad Um, you know, I had to do laundry. And uh, today being the first day with sun, was the first day I was able to do laundry. So I got laundry wor well, working back home. You know, I got Christian helping me with that. We're helping each other, obviously, you know. You already know. Uh, but anyways, but yeah, you gotta take care of yourself. First and foremost. And uh, what does that mean? You gotta organize yourself. You gotta organize your thoughts. You gotta organize your life. You gotta take care of you. You gotta figure out what you want, what you need. Um, and, and things like that, you know? Um, don't be trying to fix anybody. Don't be trying to fix the world. Don't be trying to change or do anything like that. Unless you got your shit together. Because I've always wanted to do, oh my God, these guys here. So, I mean, I've always wanted to do, um, man, I lost my turn of thought there. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I've always wanted to do big things, you know, um, I don't know what, but I know I wanted to do things. And, um, you know, one of those things being uh, helping others. I, I knew that when I was a chef, I gained a lot of pleasure out of uh, helping others and being there for others and teaching others and helping them grow and, and just all of these things. And um, you know, what I figured out wasn't that I didn't love to cook, I just, I hated working for somebody else. I hated having to reprimand an employee that didn't do anything wrong and so on and so forth, you know? So that's why I got out of all that, you know, we'll talk about that another day. But the point is, is that what I'm doing now is what I've always wanted to do, what I've always done, you know, which is just help people in whatever shape, form, capacity that I can. All right, come on. I'm waiting for traffic here. Just waiting for a little bit of traffic swing by is that i mean again 
you got to take control in whatever way you can so i can't control the guy behind the car so i'm not going to leave it to that guy behind the car to watch out for me i need to watch out for me first so that's why i stopped for a second and let him swing by because i don't know what the hell he's up to he's just taking care of himself so if i'm in his way and he's in his car he might run me over and i'm fucked you get what i'm saying so that's what you got to take care of you first and foremost like I, right there was a great example i didn't i don't trust you know the traffic enough here you know what i mean i don't trust i don't trust anything or anyone so you gotta again with that being said you gotta take matters into your own hands and be very careful <laughs> All right, and be constantly vigilant and constantly looking out for you. Because if you're not around, then how the fuck are you gonna help anyone? How are you gonna be there for anyone? How are you gonna save the world? How are you gonna do anything? Oh yeah, there you go, that's what I was uh, saying. Like I always knew that I wanted to do something, like I always wanted to help, I wanted to do like a big, big things. But the life I lived prevented me from doing said things. And uh, once I started uh, taking care of myself instead of taking care of somebody else's needs and taking care of my needs, and what I meant by that is like, you know, not taking care of my boss's needs, not taking care of all the, you know, the needs of people that did not matter in my life, but instead I started taking care of myself for the first time. And then that's when things really started uh, getting way better really quickly, you know? And it's as simple as that. So it's, it's uh, you can call it narcissism, you can call it self-involved, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but everyone that really knows me knows what my interests are, you know, what, my, what, I, what I look out for, again, you know, to help people out, to, you know, to, to push people, to, you know what is it to, to you know to do things for people that most others won't do um but again I, I won't be able to do any of that shit if i don't take care of myself and it's as simple as that because a lot of people are always asking me you know i think the, I, took, I took the wrong turn hold on a second yeah, i'm pretty sure i'm going the wrong way here I know where I need to go and this is not it so let me go this way but uh yeah you know what I mean it's like it's simple as that you got to take care of yourself man so you can be at your best for everyone else if all you care about is helping everybody or helping the world or doing all these things like that then you got to take care of yourself first and foremost because if you're like at 50 percent how the hell are you gonna help anybody you can barely help yourself Actually, I think I was going the right way. I don't know. Hold on a second. So. Oh no, I wasn't. I was not going the right way. Backtrack a little bit here. But uh yeah, anyways, um yeah man, you know you gotta watch out for you because nobody else is watching out for you. And that's a sad reality, you know what I mean? Let's see what street we're on here. This is 55. Yeah, fuck, I went the wrong way. I gotta go that way. Going against the grain. Going against the grain here. I know that guy, the cop was yelling at me. You're going the wrong way. Like, I know I am, I know. I know I'm going the wrong way. 
anyways but yeah man sometimes you got to do things like that though you know sometimes you got to go against the grain again take care of you i can't wait be worried about that cop's needs dude to tell me what he needs to tell me i know he was just watching out for me talking shit now by the way i gotta do a video for the other channel talking about the bus stops do you see all these people just piled up here these are the new bus stops that are literally in the buff fuck egypt so we gotta talk about that but yeah i got i got distracted as i was talking to you guys in the Definitely went the wrong way, but I'm going the right way now. But yeah, guys, yeah, and uh, and again, you know, going back to what I was saying, you got to take care of you, no matter what the cost. Because if you don't take care of you, you're not going to be able to take care of anybody. Period. End the story. You're not going to be able to do anything. Period. End the story. If you're at fifty percent, if you're weak, if you're not strong. You know, and, and, uh, and all these things, and how the hell are you going to be able to be there for anybody? You got to be at your best. And the only way you can be at your best is by taking care of yourself. In whatever um, shape and form that is. Whether it's uh, getting exercise, whether it's um, mentally um, fixing yourself. You know, whatever it is you got to do, we're all different. But you got to do it. Because if you don't do it, then you're going to be screwed. That's for sure. All right, I'm just going with the traffic here. I got to go straight here. Got to be a little daredevil. Daredevil out here. But, um, you know, I'm almost here at the destination. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a pause real quick. And we're going to pick it up once I'm done here. <laughs> Anyways, all right. I'll see you guys on the flip side. We're right back. All right, guys. So uh, we're back on track. Yeah. Sorry. Um, as always, you know, every time I think I'm gonna be there for five minutes, I always take a lot longer. You know. So um, I actually completely lost my train of thought, and I have no idea what I was talking about. I just do know that we were talking about um, about cleaning your room, about getting you know you in order. Um, as I was talking to my friend, you know, we were kind of talking about that a little bit, you know, in a, in a different way because I was asking him um, if he knew a certain skill and uh, as, uh, as soon as I asked him, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, not only do I know that skill, but look, and he, he started showing me and I'm like, God, well, what do you know? God dang, you know, and uh, you know, um, all of a sudden, you know what I mean? Like, he was basically, you know, looking to start doing exactly what I was already asking him if he knew how to do. Funny, huh? Funny how life always just kind of, like, surprises you like that. So, that, you know, like, again, just goes to show you, you know, like, he already, before I even came over to the house, was already thinking about doing a certain thing. He really wanted to do it. He made up his mind that he's going to do it. He's on his way to do it. And um, as he's kind of like thinking about how to start, um, all of a sudden someone like me shows up and be like, hey, uh, want to start? You know what I mean? And it's the same thing. Once you, um, once you decide, once you decide and you got to clean your room and all that, Again, you see how like those two individuals were there waiting and uh, no one made a decision. I had to make the decision. But again, what? because that's the thing, you know what I mean? That's how life is, you know what I mean? You gotta go out there and get it. You gotta go out there and make the decision. You just gotta go and do it. As soon as I did it, everybody else moves. Otherwise, you know, everybody be staring at each other there at the stop, you know? But uh, yeah, you know, back to what I was saying though, about how you, not just need to take care of yourself, um, but in a sense, you know, get control, take control, you know what I mean? And get, get back, um, um, anyways, yeah, so the minute that you start deciding to clean your, clean your room, take care of yourself, get yourself in order, put yourself in order, the universe listens and starts providing. And that's a great example right there, you know, where again, 
he was already doing some of the preliminary preliminary steps in order to get to where he wanted to go. He already knew what he wanted to do. He already knew, um, you know, exactly. He already had it all laid out. Um, he was just waiting for that, you know, the next step, which was um, the inspiration, or the, not the inspiration, but like the, all right, let's, um, let's nudge you into doing X, Y, Z. And then boom, that's where I show up. And again, it, it didn't have to be me. It could have been anyone else. It's just like everything else, you know, just like me, you know what I mean? Like, and, and a, a lot of other things in life. As I, I, that's why I don't really have an order to what I do. And I just do. I'm, I do what I feel, if what I feel is right. I do what, what makes me feel good. I, I do what, you know what I mean? What I think, you know, um, I'm supposed to be doing. I do, I go in the direction that my gut pushes me. And just so on and so forth, you know what I mean? I just do, I don't worry too much about the result i don't worry too much about all these other external activities i just worry about doing and getting it done and all that stuff you feel me i worry about me i worry about how i'm gonna how i'm gonna get it done in which direction um am i gonna go in order to make what i gotta do the easiest and the best for me and it's all about me, 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 me. It revolves around me. But if it doesn't revolve around me, then it's gonna revolve around somebody else. And that is the main complaint for most people out there. You know, that the world revolves around somebody else. Okay, well, if that's the case. Then you need the world to start revolving around you. I mean, that's it. How do you do that? It's very, you know, it's, it's I know it's simpler said than done, easier said than done, but it can be done. All right, and it might feel like you're being narcissistic. It might feel like you're being self-involved. It might feel like all these other things, but that's not the truth. It's it's really simple. You gotta be honest with yourself. If you're doing something narcissistically or self-involved in order to feed your ego, to feed you, to you know just you, 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 and you really don't care about anyone or anything else, then yeah, you know what I mean. That's not good. But most people. Most people, end result is that they are taking care of them, taking care of somebody. You know, they're taking care of somebody. They're taking care of. You know, they're taking care of somebody. They're taking care of uh, of, 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 a, of a job. They're taking care of all of these other things that is not them. They're taking care of all of these things except for themselves. And that's, a, that's the major problem with a lot of people, is that they're always taking care of everything else except for themselves. And that's why they're miserable. That's why they're always, you know, um, the victim. That's why they're, you know, always um, saying, nobody helps me, nobody, nobody this, nobody nothing. Um, and it's true because nobody, nobody is there for you. So you got to be there for you. Now, if you want to be there for others, like me, for example, then you again you have to take care of you. Because these other people that I'm helping, you know, I can't be sitting here expecting them to help me because they're the ones that need the help. So that's why I got to help me so that I can help them. Now, if later on they help me, that's a completely different situation. But um, anyways, with that being said, I'm already basically here. I gotta end this uh, show here, all right? Because I gotta do some more work, and then uh, you know I gotta film on the way back. <laughs> We're gonna do another episode for the other channel here. So, anyways, guys, all I want to say is thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this kind of content, you already know what to do. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. But more importantly than anything else, stay awesome. Check out the website so you can see all of the content that I create so you can see all of the videos that I make and you can see everything that I do including the Monday motivations including um, the many the videos including the cooking everything so go check it out thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one bye what could you do to improve yourself well let, let's step one step backwards the first question might be why should you even bother improving yourself 
And I think the answer to that is something like, so you don't suffer any more stupidly than you have to. And maybe so others don't have to either. It's something like that. You know, like there's a real injunction at the bottom of it. It's not some casual self-help doctrine. It's that if you don't organize yourself properly, you'll pay for it. And in a big way, and so will the people around you. Now, and you could say, well, I don't care about that, but that's actually not true. You actually do care about that. Because if you're in pain, you will care about it. And so you do care about it, even if it's just that negative way, you know. Um, it's very rare that you can find someone who's in excruciating pain who would ever say, well, it would be no better if I was out of this. It's sort of pain is one of those things that brings the idea that it would be better if it didn't exist along with it. It's incontrovertible. So you get your act together so that there isn't any more stupid pain around you than necessary. Well, so then the question might be, well, how would you go about getting your act together? And the answer to that, and this is a phenomenological idea too, it's something like, look around for something that bothers you and see if you can fix it. So now you think, well, let's say, there, let's say you go into a, you can do this in a room. It's quite fun to do it just when you're sitting in a room, like a room, maybe your bedroom, you can sit there and just sort of meditate on it and think, okay, if I wanted to, spend 10 minutes making this room better, what would I have to do? And you have to ask yourself that, right? It's not a command, it's like a genuine question. And things will pop out in the room that you know, you, like there's a stack of papers over there that's kind of bugging you and you know that maybe little order there would be a good thing and you know, you haven't, there's some rubbish behind your computer monitor that you haven't attended to for like six months and the room would be slightly better if it was a little less dusty and the cables weren't all tangled up the same way. And like, if you, if you allow yourself just to co consider the expanse in which you exist at that moment, there'll be all sorts of things that'll pop out in it that you could just fix. And you know, I might say, well, if you were coming to see me for psychotherapy, the easiest thing for us to do first would just be to get you to organize your room. You think, well, is that psychotherapy? And the answer is, well, it depends on how you conceive the limits of your being. And I would say, start where you can start. You know, if, if something announces itself to you, which is a strange way of thinking about it, as in need of repair, that you could repair, then, hey, fix it. You fix a hundred things like that, your life will be a lot different. Now, I often tell people too, fix the things you repeat every day, because people tend to think of those as trivial, right? You get up, you brush your teeth, you, do, you have your breakfast, you know, you, you have your routines that you go through every day. Well, th those probably constitute 50% of your life. And people think, well, they're mundane, I don't need to pay attention to them. It's like, no, no, that's exactly wrong. The things you do every day, those are the most important things you do. Hands down. All you have to do is do the arithmetic. You figure it out right away. So, a hundred adjustments to your broader domain of being, and there's a lot less rubbish and there's a lot less rubbish around and a lot fewer traps for you to step into. And so, that's in keeping with Jung's idea about erasing the dis once you've got your mind and your emotions together, and once you're acting that out, then you can extend what you're willing to consider yourself and start fixing up the things that are part of your broader extent. Now, sometimes you don't know how to do that. So you might say, imagine you're walking down Bloor Street and there's this guy who's like alcoholic and schizophrenic and has been on the streets for 10 years. He sort of stumbles towards you and, you know, incoherently mutters something. That's a problem. And it would be good if you could fix it, but you haven't got a clue about how to fix that. You just walk around that and go find something that you could fix because if you muck about in that, not only is it unlikely that you'll help that person, it's very likely that you'll get hurt yourself. So, you know, just because while you're experiencing things announce themselves as in need of repair, doesn't mean that it's you right then and there that should repair them. You have to have some humility. You know, you don't walk up to a helicopter that isn't working and just start tinkering away with it. You, you have to stay within your domain of competence. But most of the time, if people look at their lives, you know, it's a very interesting thing to do. Uh, I, like the, I like the idea of the room because you can do that at the drop of a hat. You know, you go back to where you live and sit down and think, okay, I'm going to make this place better for half an hour. What should I do? And you have to ask. And 
things will just pop up like mad. And it's partly because your mind is a very strange thing. As soon as you give it a name, a genuine aim, it'll reconfigure the world in keeping with that aim. That, that's actually how you see to begin with. And so if you set it a task, especially, you have to be genuine about it, which is why you have to bring your thoughts and emotions together and then you have to get them in your body so you're acting consistently. You have to be genuine about the aim, but once you aim, the world will reconfigure itself around that aim, which is very strange. And, and it, it's, it's, it's technically true. You know, the best example of that, you have all seen this video where you watch the basketballs being tossed back and forth between members of the white team versus the black team. And while you're doing that, a gorilla walks up into the middle of the video and you don't see it. It's like, you know, if you thought about that experiment for about five years, that would be about the right amount of time to spend thinking about it. Because what it shows you is that you see what you aim at. And that man, if you can get one thing through your head in, as a consequence of even being in university, that would be a good one. You see what you aim at. And so because one inference you might draw from that is, be careful what you aim at, right? It, what you aim at determines the way the world manifests itself to you. And so if the world is manifesting itself in a very negative way, one thing to ask is, are you aiming at the right thing? Now, you know, I'm not trying to reduce everybody's problems to an improper aim. People get cut off at the knees for all sorts of reasons. You know, they get sick, they have accidents. There's a random element to being, that's for sure. But, and so you don't want to take anything, even that particular phrase, too far. You want to bind it with the fact that random things do happen to people. But it's still a great thing to ask. <laughs>